Wastewater Support Committee for July 3rd, 2018. Good morning. Um, we'll start out with any public comment. You're just confused. Okay, that's all right too. <laughs> we hope to add to that confusion if we can. We hope to add to that confusion if we can. I know. <laughs> okay, uh, the approval of minutes from June 5th, 2018. Marie? Madam Chair, I move that we approve the minutes of uh, June 5th, 2018 and June 21, 2018 as presented. Second. Um, what am I saying? All in favor. All in favor. Any discussion? Oh, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> You're approved. Okay, you did both, didn't you? Yep. Okay, done. All right, next thing on the agenda is a selection of officers. Is Madam on? Chair? Yes. Um, okay, so um, it's that time of year that we have to um, reselect our officers. And I have to say that normally I really like to see new people every year. I like to see a rotation and um, new ideas running the show. But this year, this committee didn't start till the end of January. Mm -hmm. So given that, that we um, you know, didn't even get a full year in, I would propose that uh, the slate for this year be Sharon Flager for chair, Peter Hughes for vice chair, and myself for clerk. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? <laughs> yes. I would just say that we uh, recently um, had a member who expired off, you know, oh. or, um, termed out, if you will. Um, and so we're going to have a new member <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, coming on, hopefully, by the next meeting. So really, there are only four of us existing on the committee. So when you try and spread around, not too much you can spread around. I also think that Noreen, when we first started this, like in January, said that she would at least do all the minutes uh, through the end of this year, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so um, that's a good thing. Okay. Um, so I'm happy about that. And your leadership has been awesome. So well, thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, any further? Any further discussion? No. Okay. Approval? Aye. 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 Okay. That's taken care of. <laughs> All right, um, the next issue on the agenda is a step-by-step -step format and contact dis content discussion. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, I might ask that this topic be moved down a step or two just in case Ann Howe shows oh, up. Oh, all right, that'll work. Uh, or what do you think? I yeah, mean, yeah, because I didn't get any notice that she wasn't coming. So what do you think? Want to move it down? Wait till you get near the end, you go at it again. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. The next one is a discussion of future outreach plans. Um, at the oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's behind an extremely cautious driver. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual. <laughs> okay, new chairman, we just <laughs> Get your breath. Okay. Um, at the last board of selectmen meeting. Um, the uh, topic came up as far as getting an outreach person to help this committee and the town with outreach to the community. Somebody professional, somebody with a background. I'm going to let Larry Valentine take over from here. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm uh, Larry Valentine, the liaison yeah. okay. from uh, Board of Selectmen to the uh, committee. First off, I want to comment that it looks like we're segregated here. There's women on this side and women on this side. <laughs> We noticed that. Uh, let, me, let me give you my excuse. I've learned over the years that if I sit in this side, you're always on camera, so I have to look respectful. <laughs> if I'm closer to this side, I'm off camera, and you know, I can, not, I can, not, I can slouch <laughs> over. <laughs> That's right. But thanks for coming. It's always good to get people attending, attending meetings. We had talked for some time, uh, this committee in the past, of, of uh, communication and outreach to the uh, to the. Uh, residents in town is, uh, you know, first directed towards East Harley Fit overall. And we've had a good crew. We've got Dan here who's done a great job, Megan, uh, Chris, and the committee's done a great job. Our concern and my personal concern is, is this is a, a lot of uh, money. We're spending $25 million now and that's only phase two. And so I want to be sure that we're uh, doing all we can 
to have a direct and focused uh, outreach and communication to the residents in town so that they understand what's happening. They have their chance for uh, input, broadly speaking, with this committee. And uh, in the end, I want this to not only go well for phase two, but I want people to come away from this saying that uh, we as a town did a great job of putting this forward because we have other phases that are critical uh, to getting this, uh, cleaning up our bays and embayments. And in that regard, I proposed at the last uh, selections meeting that we, uh, uh, we look at the contract help as a communication and a, or outreach uh, coordinator. And that I would bring it back to this committee for your discussion and vote. And uh, I'll read kind of the overall charge, but just briefly what I'm hoping is, is that uh, we prepare uh, some dot points and give it back to the uh, town staff to uh, prepare an RFP and uh, try to keep the uh, points focused because we don't have a lot of money, but if we can aid our, uh, our effort in communication, I think it'd be well worth uh, to spend uh, some money going forward. So what I'd like to do is read uh, what I've given you and have that on camera as well as discussion point. And some of the dot points I see as, as moving forward. And speaking of town minister, I got Chris I'm just saying that we're moving forward. Uh, again, uh, uh, I envision, this envision, that's it. I'm just going to read this verbatim. So I always hate to do that in public. But it, this envision that this coordination effort will be led by an experienced communication outreach firm on a, on a contractual basis to aid the wastewater support committee in providing direct and easily accessible wastewater information. An outreach strategy with specific actions will be part of this contract to encourage input from residents with a single point of contact for a direct and rapid response. A key will be to anticipate and help resolve potential issues. So I tried to set in some broad scope of how we uh, can pull this together. Uh, again, people have done a great job in the past, but I want to move forward and be sure we're taking the next step and be an excellent uh, communication. I've tried to then uh, give some dot points behind this some specific actions that I'm hoping that, uh, that you'll debate and we'll come to some uh, conclusion today. Uh, first is help develop a communication and outreach strategy. Second point I've made is identify and develop relationships with residents, neighborhoods, media personnel, agencies to promote communication. Develop a communication tree, and I put that in quotes, then I'll, what else do, I'll describe that. To include the appropriate town staff and consulting engineer, which is in this case is CDM Smith, uh, and with one person designated to respond to questions. Help employ all relevant social media, TV, newspaper coverage, suggest additional communication forms. Uh, just as a side note, uh, we've, we've done the committee and Caleb and Jamie, the TV has done an excellent job putting this on the web, but we've learned over the years that's only one uh, form that people use to get the information and we've used uh, we need to you know quite frankly explore all we can Measure and report on the effectiveness of communication activities Assist with other external internal communication duties as needed and help prepare monthly status reports uh, I may have too few I may have two more too many dot points what I'm trying to do is, is organize, have a strategy and organize a simple uh, communication uh, focus, if you will, but also keep it in line. Uh, we have limited budget. You know, I'm hoping that if this, we agree, I, I'll pick on Chris and others to uh, uh, go for an RFP and see what, what's available on this. But I don't want to get, it's easy to get carried away on this too and expand it so it's not doable. But that's my pitch and I look forward to your uh, discussion. Do we want to discuss it now, or do you want us to just send uh, comments? I think there's no reason to discuss it now. Pardon? Yeah, dis discuss it now. All right. Uh, <coughs> I, I have uh, concerns about it, actually. Um, I, I think the problem is that you can actually add layers that would increase con uh, confusion rather than decrease them. And <coughs> I can't see how a single point of contact who's 
charged with outreach can get up to speed on some of this if there are limited budget. I also was concerned because if I recall in conversations with you, when we hired CDM Smith, one of part of their contract was outreach. Is that still in their contract? It is, but I think uh, our experience has been, at least my feedback has been, that that hasn't been their strength, the strength of yeah. the engineering. So should they pay for it themselves instead of the town? Well, it doesn't matter. It would pay, we pay for it either way because we contract with CDM Smith. Well, there's nothing enforceable in the contract then. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious who, you know, having been involved in things yeah, like this the, in yeah. the past with, um, uh, you know, selecting <clears throat> the appropriate person would be quite challenging oh. unless they were someone who was, for instance, retired mass DOT or someone who's really in the past been extremely familiar. So I would suggest that if you do do something like this, that you pick someone who has, um, a pretty stiff background in doing this before and is interested in the lower fee just because it, yeah. you know there it's a part-time thing right. for them uh, those are good points Ann. Uh, and I'm sure where we go with this I think the first step is to go with an RFP and what type of responses we get and the second broad thing is is to look at the overall strategy Maureen any comments? Um, okay um, <clears throat> I'm very much for this um, I recommended something like this back in 2013. So um, actually we wanted kind of a bigger position at the time, Larry and I, but um, you know, this would be, I feel, something that would help to fill a gap um, as we proceed with the actual construction and the interfacing with the 650 homes followed by the 400 homes. Um, I do feel it's going to be, a, if, if we were to go ahead with something like this, I feel it's going to be a difficult transition, just like the transition into construction is going to be you know, a difficult transition. Up till now, everything's been, other than what the engineers do in their own area, everything's been kind of theory to the public and voting money and learning things. Now, now we're down to the real thing. And change is, change is hard. You know, it's not going to be perfect. But um, I know that Larry and I for years have been talking about we really want to make this as stressless as possible for the community involved. Um, it's it's um, going to be difficult anyway. I mean, it's your own yard, your own property you have to make decisions about. It's not like some of the other towns like Chatham where they're doing 100% you know, so the attitude's a little different. It's kind of like, well, they're going to do me eventually one way or the other, and how which we've chosen to do only 50% of the community. And the reason we've chosen to do that is to keep the overall cost at 220 million rather than 450 million. So areas were selected by density to get the numbers down for the state, and that's why certain areas were selected in the order they were. But nevertheless, it's communities that are being told, you're first, you're, you know, we're gonna go through your yard, and this is it. So, you know, I'm not sure if this will be a perfect arrangement, and I think there will be some tugging and pulling in the beginning, but um, right now, you know, I'm not sure who somebody calls. I mean, I know on printed materials it says you can call, so Dan and Megan and Chris have been wonderful, you can call Dan, you can call Megan, you know, but we don't have a single point person. Um, and I think we should. Um, I don't think this person should be an engineer. In, in my view, this person should be able to come up to speed at the level of, for instance, maybe the lay people who have been on the committees. You know, up to the speed where they have an understanding of the pro a good understanding of the project, but don't know the engineering things. So they understand the project enough to know that if, you are, if I was that person and you were to ask me a question, I would really know the right person to direct that question to and make sure that answer got followed up, taken care of, and tracked that kind of thing. Not necessarily to speak for the specifics of the engineering. Um, I'm not quite sure how, the, how it would go with who this person answered to you know, that type of thing. I'm st while we discuss this, I'm still a little uh, vague on that. 
But the last factor I'll say about this person is, um, you know, I, I'd like to see, and if Chris Harlow, I remember who just, um, you know, timed out, was here, he spoke about it for many years. We have many different audiences in the current country. You know, we have millennials who only look at things online. We have older people who only read papers. We have, you know, about six different audiences out there. I don't know how to reach all those six different audiences. So I would like to see somebody with some kind of experience in public relations or community development who would know how to get our message from the community back to us so we can address it and vice versa. Peter, comment. Thank you. Um, thanks, Larry, for bringing this to us. I don't know what kind of resources you're talking about dollar-wise. That's something you probably don't want to share with us at this point in time just because it's going to issue an RFP. You know, but I'm assuming this isn't a full-time position. It's somebody's part-time efforts. Yeah, that's how I envision it. I have, yeah. I have no idea until we get a response and see. Right, what, and so the first yeah, thing responses I, could be so great that we, you know, we say we can't do it. Right. So the uh, the first thing I start thinking about after I read through this is say, what are the deliverables we're going to ask this person or entity to yeah. do? And I would think that we'd want this person to issue, develop an issue, a monthly newsletter on the project, just because I think that's something you know they can interview different people about different things they can. You know, they can have the homeowner that they go see and visit and tell their story. I mean, all kinds of things like that that gets it out there. And that can be both hard copy, you know, social media, however you're going to distribute that. Um, I would think we want to have this, this, um, this coordinator develop a comprehensive uh, database for contacting property owners. We often hear, uh, gee, this person never heard of this project, or maybe some of you ladies here, here today for the first time. Uh, folks sometimes seem to be caught surprised that this is even going on and um, how we go about contacting, you know, this person may need a phone call, that person may need an email, this person maybe only responds to some, you know, some address that's in Cleveland, I don't know, something like that. I also think that this person should be responsible for holding some neighborhood activities or events. Uh, in other words, bring the neighborhood together, and we've talked about this before. Um, you know, but coordinate those things or encourage those things uh, and, and just support those kind of activities. I also think there needs to be, and, and CDM Smith will be doing this, but the so-called master schedule for the project, I think yes. that this person needs to uh, be, up, be working with them to update this on a regular basis uh, and then present that information, if you will, uh, in, an effective, in an effective manner. But I, I think this is an essential role. I don't see us doing these activities, quite frankly, you know, as far as this committee. Um, so I think, I think this is um, pretty darn important. I guess the question becomes, um, you know, what are the requirements of this person? Um, you know, I think you want someone who's been in the, yeah. the marketing, public relations kind of outreach. But I also think you want this person to maintain every contact they make with a property owner because sometimes we hear nobody contacted us, somebody will say, well, I left a postcard, well, I never got it because I don't live here. You know, some sort of a record that said, yes, we contacted Fred at this address, and, and this is how many times we outreach to him, and, um, you know, maintain that sort of database. So, but I, I, I think it could be um, a very interesting position. I would like to see someone who is close to the town of Harwich, but I mean physically, because I think this person is going to have to be a presence in the town. In other words, if somebody responded to the RFP who lived in Concord, New Hampshire, they may do a great job with graphics and whatnot, but I think you need a person on the ground here. I mean, that, that's just how I feel about it. So, thank you. Okay, um, I'd just like to address one thing. As far as Ann, you, made, you, you didn't feel as though you didn't like the idea of the position. That isn't, that isn't what he's asking. The board already voted on this, that they want the position. Let me finish. Um, so that really isn't our our purview to vote on this. I think the, the way Larry was going, and I would have to agree with this, is that we need someone that has the qualifications um, and the training to do public relations and outreach. And I see this position as someone that will then interact with this committee as well as the administration so that that information um, gets back to us. For instance, the questions that, that maybe Chris or, or uh, Megan 
or Dan are getting. We haven't heard any. I don't know what, the, what questions they're getting. Um, I see this as somewhat of a, a maybe as a communication void where it's making it difficult for our com committee to move forward and do some things when we, we don't really know all that's going on. And I see this person as someone that would be the hub to reach out to both the administration, work with us, and work with the town. And I would agree that I think it needs to be somebody here or local, someone that, that is, knows what's going on in this community. Now, I don't know whether we can find somebody like that. Um, as far as the particulars on this, I would like some time to look at it and <coughs> maybe... Um, well, and I think that's the reason we're discussing it now. This is the initial discussion. Yeah. I would suggest that See, you discuss it until... Yeah, that's okay. I'm just answering your question. I realize they voted on it. Okay. But, but let, me, uh, let me just finish my comment. My comment is that this is an initial discussion. I would ask just that, you know, that you guys, you know, bring back your comments to you, uh, to you, Sharon. All right. Uh, work on this and put it on your agenda for next week, and we'll get further discussions from, mm -hmm. from town staff as we go forward. Because, you know, I feel strongly that this is an important activity we should be undertaking. But in saying that, I, I realize some concerns. How does it work? How we pay for it? You know, can't be. Uh, I think it's. It's short money to spend some money on this. We're spending a lot of money overall. We gotta be sure it goes right. Yeah. But we also have to be sure we uh, do this in a reasonable way. So I think, uh, you know, I would continue the discussion as long as you want, but then I would bring it back after getting some more input and some uh, and fine tuning. You know, no first, no, I've never written a first draft that's worth anything, quite frankly. <laughs> and so this, uh, this will hopefully at least get us started and we'll get going on. and. And we do have, uh, as Sharon said, we, we do have uh, uh, board support on moving forward in fashion. But, yeah. but in their support, I promise we bring back details. So that it was a you know, conceptual support at this point. Would okay. it be better for us to um, send our comments to you since you're the one that's going to... You can. You send them, to if you send them separately, yeah. don't, don't uh, talk back and forth. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll do it and I'll send and it back. And then you, since you're the one delegated from the board to do that, it might be better if we do that to you. You compile That'd be what fine. and we'll go from there. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I yeah. would just say that one concern I would have too yeah. is how much legal liability for what they communicate that is clarified. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because there's a possibility they give out misinformation that will cost someone money. Yeah. And, and so that becomes um, yeah. An issue. Yeah, big and concern. It, it comes down even to developing a, a common set of terms because the whole use of pumps and meeting and property is, is very fuzzy at present. And uh, I'd even have that run by a lawyer so that there was a common set of terms. Yeah. That's okay. the way states and most city governments nationwide do it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, no, I, I was just going to say, you know, we've been talked about this quite a few times and sometimes we lose momentum. Um, I, I don't really think, my opinion, that we should be sending back individual comments anymore unless they are earth shaking. You know, I, I really think it would be, you know, for Sharon to summarize them or you and Sharon to present them or, I mean, I don't, I just don't see the point of, you know, Peter's individual thing or Ian's or mine at this point. That's just I, I, I would, it. I would disagree. I'd go ahead and send them to me and I'll work with Sharon to, yeah, uh, that'll work. Okay. to that'll put work. them together. Trying to save you I some be, work. I know, but I want to be sure we have, uh, it, I want to be, have it well vetted. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I would just say, you know, assuming you move forward this, Larry, that when you, once you get the RFPs in, when you go to evaluate them, maybe you want someone on this board or this committee to be part of that process yeah. just because, you know, we have one side. No, of I assume that, Peter. So I assume that'll that. be helpful. And then that will give us a chance to get uh, comments in from town town staff too as we go forward. All but right. I, mean, I, I want to do it, but I want to be sure it's an open process because it's uh, I want to have it well, well vetted. Okay. All right. That's Thank my you. pitch. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, then we're going to go back up to the step-by-step -step guide because we were waiting for Ann to show up. Um, Ann has already spent quite a bit of time working on that, um, and it, it was something that we have, uh, with this committee, really haven't had a chance to address because we were getting ready for the, uh, the voting in May. So we're back to the step-by-step -step guide, and then 
um, Noreen came up with this chapter outline of, um, that's a strictly chapter outline. These aren't specific points um, to work with. And I thought since you have already worked on this, and I believe we have somebody in the audience that will eventually be on this committee, um, I thought maybe the two of you could work on this together and then bring it back to the, uh, the committee so that we only have two people working on this rather than, yes. than trying to have a whole committee work on it. <laughs> so well, and, and it's ongoing. There's still a lot of uh, things to be clarified. It's yep. a moving target, which is the hardest aspect of it. Go ahead. Could I just, just so the public knows what we're talking about, um, it, what we had talked about last spring was developing what we call a step-by-step -step guide. Some other towns have them so that the people who were going to be connected first or in the near future would be able to look at this manual, hopefully, you know, kind of direct and simple. And if it says, like, if your septic is in your backyard, you should consider these things and take these step steps. If your septic is in your front yard, you know, perhaps this would be the first thing to do. You know, all different kinds of things like that. If you need financial help, you might consider this. Um, you know, a list of some professional people, certainly the, uh, the contact people in, in the town and also maybe a glossary of terms for all these terms we try to explain, but we throw around and we forget to explain them. So that's what we're talking about, is how to write a step-by-step -step guide. Okay, go ahead. Well, okay, so I just, I just say this, assuming that person X gets appointed, <laughs> I'm sure I remain nameless, but anyhow, once we get, once we get our full, once we get this anonymous person on board. Person X. And, and if we pair up, you know, Anne with the anonymous person, <laughs> and we give them the task of, of putting this together, um, I think after that, every, every meeting we have, there should be an update on where we yeah. are. Yeah. And I think at some point, not too far in the distant future, we should, we as a committee should have some expectations as to when a draft would be coming, you know, some. Yeah reasonable draft that's, you know, like 90% complete or something like that, um, so we all get a shot at it. I think for us to sit here and try and go through it all in a meeting is not really productive, but, um, you know, I think that if we have something we can, we can uh, at our leisure, um, go through and digest and, and make productive comments and whatnot be helpful. I think that's a great idea, rather than waiting till it's completely finished and then well, no. there are comments. So I think commenting along the development line would work out well. So, um, sorry. Um, I also think even even if um, person X and uh, <laughs> are you know going to undertake this, there's no reason they can't enlist the aid of other members of the committee. So, like if you were to say, you know, Noreen, could you help us out with the financial sections? You know, because it's a lot to do. Then, you know, I might spew out a draft page on that that you might Peter, take out of consideration. Twenty minutes later, it'd be done, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Or Peter with Whatever. his expertise oh, in certain areas, done, so. rather than have it, you know, fall totally on your shoulders. You know, just throwing that out there that there's nothing wrong with doing that either. So. I've already asked Peter for assistance on real estate because you've been right. talking to the brokers and yep. you have much closer yep. uh, uh, interaction with the real real questions. And it's yep. also my intent once we get to near. I, I'm aiming for mid to late July, probably more late now because there are just some outstanding things where the information requirements have shifted slightly mm -hmm. that um, I want to run it by a few homeowners to see how confused it makes them <laughs> rather than clarifying things. I mean, I think we need to do a little bit of testing to see, not a huge amount, but have a few people look at it and say, does this answer your questions and, and see if they, if they actually as the ultimate audience um, understand where we're going with it. Because that's, we can create answers, but we're probably going to need a little bit of input about the users of the document. I'd actually be very happy if we had a product, you know, by September or maybe even late September. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. it takes a while to do things. We only have monthly meetings. But like you say, yeah. if it's by the end of July, but then 
you know, most people have different things going on in the summer or many do, and then come September, you know, things get a little serious again, so that's what I would do. Well, I have the biggest amount of time to work on it in the summer, right. ironically. Oh, by so all means, I'm you know, <laughs> earlier the better. Yeah. Okay, any further comments? All right. Um, We've discussed before, the next one is the committee's update to the Board of Selectment on a regular basis starting in September. Um, I know once before this came up with the board that they wanted um, some reporting from this committee as to what we were doing, where we were with different issues. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't suggest doing this on a weekly basis the way they, the other departments are doing because we don't have that type of um, things going on, but uh, I'm not opposed to that on, let's say, a monthly basis if, if this committee wants to, at a Board of Selectmen meeting, get up to and, and say what, what we're working on, where we are with, with what's going on. Um, I don't have an issue with that. We can, um, Larry left already, uh, <laughs> ask Larry what his thoughts are on that as far as the Board of Selectmen, but I think it's a good idea. Go ahead, Doreen. Okay, thank you. So I've been pushing for this for a while. Um, it kind of started way back when um, Peter was a, a selectman and he started a thing called Wastewater Moments. Mm -hmm. And every week there was a little blurb on this aspect or that aspect just to um, done kind of randomly just to have different things to educate the public on. Um, but and we had talked about keeping that up but I kind of feel again the project is morphing into a different stage. So, and, and we are, you know, a smaller group of people. So I think once a month, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, whether it's the second week or the, you know, third week or whatever could be worked out. Um, and I don't mean a report at the end of the packet, a written report. Yeah, yeah. I mean the chair or her designee would um, stand up and be an agenda item once a month um, just to give, since it's such a, a $200 million project to give an update on what's going on that month with the project and with the committee. So do we, we need to, oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. And my suggestion is we, we, we can, if you said like first, second, third, or whatever, right. you know, selections meeting, we make it one after meeting we just right. had, for instance. So this committee, whoever's gonna make the presentation or whatever, or update, can at least say, okay, here are the four bullet points I'm gonna tell the select right. next week. So Perfect. So okay. Uh, something like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't oh, think yeah. you wanna make it, you know, too difficult. No. No, and I think we should actually rotate simple. folks yeah. getting up and making her, you know. That's fine. It, you know, as long as, you know, as, as people don't, you know, can make the meeting. Yeah. yeah. That, that's yeah. not a problem. Not yeah. a problem. Okay. So before go we go on, so how would you proceed with that? You would talk to um, the chair, Julie, and set it up for, I would suggest I, this not start till the fall, the summer is yeah. crazy anyway. I would probably go through Larry, since he's our okay. liaison. I'll okay. talk to Larry and let him bring it. I'll just say we, we, this committee requests to be on the agenda once a month, right. mm -hmm. hopefully early in the meeting, and uh, yeah. just, just, give a, just give a brief five-minute update, five yeah. update on the status of the committee. Yeah, yeah. early, early, yeah. Maybe, maybe just a suggestion, Christopher Clark, town administrator, uh, maybe just a suggestion on that. I know uh, Carolyn sometimes comes from the community center and does yes, updates yes, on the weekly yes. report at yes. the beginning. So I don't know if you even necessarily need to, to ask for, I mean, if you just plan on being there on once a oh, month and do right. an update. Because you catch people early in the meeting and you're probably more likely to get more, more people tuned in. Um, Sharon? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. So my, my only comment to that would be, that sounds great to be early in the meeting, but I love seeing it on the agenda. A lot of the town looks at the agenda. They, they would pay attention to that oh. more if they see the word wastewater this, you know. I don't see the word wastewater, I don't look at the packet, um, you know, but I mean, that's just my opinion. I would say it'd be an agenda okay. item. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I'm gonna probably do as the administrator is, I, I did think that Peter had the right idea of doing, you know, a consistent update uh, when we did that. And, and I am, I, I realize that that probably would be more helpful. So certainly as I come, I kind of assume that if I do an update with you guys, I know I'm firmly on your agenda that people see that. Uh, I don't like to necessarily do it two or three times so people get kind of sick of seeing me uh, in terms of this, but I will put that on the agenda too under the administrator's announcements. And one of the things I hope to do is to kind of have more 
um, you know, specifics on that so people, when they do get the, uh, the, the agenda, they can right. see that that's going to be talked about. I think what we would do, what whoever would, would stand up there would be more or less like what this committee yep. specifically is, what we're working on, what we're doing, where we are uh, at, at any given time point with whatever projects we're working on versus what you might do as an update, which is probably going to be different. Yeah, that's fine. I'm yeah. just kind of letting you know what, yeah. what my intent is. Okay. All right, any further comments? All right, update from the county, from the county administrator. You're back I on the hot seat. I'm thinking about staying up here. <laughs> I do see some new faces in the in the crowd. You know, I, I would really just encourage, uh, to your question earlier, uh, we sent out the 650 plus or minus yes. uh, letters. I, I did have uh, two phone calls that came directly back to me. I don't know, three and five. So we are having people, and I did, I, I'm in the process uh, in terms of my update. There's a couple things going on. CDM is number one, going through and finalizing their design plans. So they have the, the bid spec material or the actual plans for the sewer. Uh, so I did receive that, I think last week or the week before. Uh, so they have, uh, they're, they're breaking the construction up, uh, phase one and, and phase two. So there's potentially two vendors. The rationale for that is to try to get mid-sized companies. They believe that there'll be more mid-sized companies. Uh, we did have a very good meeting with uh, folks over in uh, Chatham, uh, and we are trying to figure out their timing for when they're going out. Uh, so we want to make sure we kind of sequence if there is an opportunity to do a project in which uh, one vendor would get three different contracts all in the same area. We may save on mobilization costs and things of that nature. Uh, so that's something that we will uh, be talking about in terms of also the, the timing, uh, trying to get uh, things where perhaps the bid documents are done and, and we have a contractor in the early spring. Uh, the one of the challenges of uh, doing construction in Cape Cod in the summer is the summer. <laughs> we have a lot of uh, Cape traffic, so uh, generally you see a little bit more construction that's focused in the spring and the fall, uh, and not necessarily in the uh, in the middle of the summer. Uh, I would say, as the administrator, uh, as I've done already for the uh, the folks coming in doing the gas line. We did select certain areas in town where they can continue to work in the summer because we've got to get these projects done. So, um, you know, I, I realize that we're going to be asking people to be um, in upheaval for probably two or three years uh, with this roadway work uh, with this project. So it, it's something that we need to ask people for their, uh, their patience. And, and I get it. I got stuck one day four times trying to make my way <laughs> through town. And I know where some of this stuff is going. Um, so it, it definitely is going to be a challenge. A couple other things I, I know I mentioned to the board uh, about uh, we are trying to get uh, organized so we can get our application in to the SRF folks, the State Revolving Loan Fund, uh, so we would be have a potential to be eligible for a 0%. Right now all the assumptions we have made is a 2%, uh, but because this is a, a nitrogen reduction project and because this is a regional project that we will be submitting simultaneous with the uh, Town of Chatham, uh, that there is a, uh, a pretty good potential uh, that we would have a, uh, a zero percent, which some of those calculations that we had done early on uh, would be even more favorable. So I, I think that that is uh, one thing. In terms of uh, Coltman and Page has been tasked, uh, one of the, my, my key person there was away for a few weeks. Uh, I do have a meeting set up with him for next week. Actually, uh, Dan and I have a meeting set up with him. Uh, Coleman and Page is working on all the streets to one of the things we have to do as part of the SRF application is to make sure that we have ownership over uh, the entire project site. So that means all the public ways, obviously that's a little easier task. And then there are I think 15 private ways that we're looking at. <coughs> and I have commenced my uh, negotiations with the six locations or the six parties in which we're looking at doing uh, pump stations. Uh, there are two uh, cross-country runs, and what do I mean by cross-country runs? We are trying to avoid, and the plans do avoid, uh, ripping up or, or going through the direct intersection at 39 and 137. Uh, obviously, that's a, a major thoroughfare for us. So we are talking about before coming into that intersection, going cross-country uh, at the uh, location of people know as 400 East is one area that we're looking at and the other is to go through the uh, stop and shop parking lot. 
uh, the, not, not parking lot, but their access road. They have a, a frontage road, if you would. So the, the plan does call for that. So those easements need to be in the works or underway. Uh, not necessarily we can apply in October having those be close, but we definitely have to have those be well underway. Uh, I would say it was interesting uh, in, a, in a very good meeting uh, with the, the first folks uh, on the first pump station, uh, they were amenable. Uh, we had some discussions, and it's interesting having these one-on-one -on -one sessions. That's why I do encourage one-on-one -on -one sessions, because there's a lot of uh, individual comments and questions that come up. Uh, these, these folks, uh, the property owner for one of them, uh, had a vacant parcel and had a parcel that they had their home on. So they had two parcels out of that 650. And you know, I thought that it was interesting that they had attended both of the public information sessions and they had plenty of literature. So their, their awareness of the project I thought was very high. Uh, but they, they did have questions and I said, you know, I would love to get those questions because I think those are reflections of what the community, you know, it's a, it's a good sampling if you would. Uh, so they did have questions about, you know, what are the costs and how do the costs break down? So just to, again, maybe to remind folks, since I have the opportunity here, uh, we have the, the pipes and the laterals, which are the pipes on the main, main line to the side of where the property would be. That project, putting those installs in, the $25 million, is part of the tax obligation of the town. So when we talk about $150,000, I'm sorry, $150 on your tax bill for a $350,000 home, that's one component. That's what that component buys. That $150, too, um, was predicated on a 2% borrowing cost. So that would be less if we're able to get zero, uh, which that was kind of the intent, was to, to present a, a worst case scenario. Uh, the other cost that people will have is then the hookup. How do I get from my home to connect into the street? So that would be the connection cost that would be borne by the homeowner. Uh, some people, when I asked, uh, they had saved up money and were planning on saving up money. Uh, to cover those costs. Uh, there were not, uh, at least the two or three that I had spoken to, uh, were not totally interested in the uh, county loan program. I'm not totally surprised by that because that's what Chatham had told us had been their experience. People save up and pay for it themselves or they do a uh, home, home mortgage uh, or a uh, uh, home equity uh, line to be able to do that kind of work. Uh, so not everyone is using the county, but the county is available for folks that, that have that need. And then the third cost that, that people would have uh, in terms of the two direct costs would be whatever you use for flow, uh, once you are connected to the sewer, then you would pay on a per gallon or linear gallon basis. And that, that number would be based upon uh, the amount of water going into the home. One question that I, I do, I'm kind of getting a little bit more um, attention being paid to, uh, maybe just in some of the interactions I've been having more with people, is the question of irrigation. And, and quite honestly, I think that uh, we do need to have, uh, have the Water Commission be more engaged and talk about how is that going to be accomplished. Uh, just for, again, since I have the opportunity where we're being televised, just to kind of get into a little bit. It costs the town money to treat the water and bring the water to the home. So there is a cost associated with providing quality water to homes. And there is a cost that when you give us the water back uh, in a dirty state or in a, in a state that needs to be cleaned, there's a cost to clean it and then reintroduce it into the environment. So the water side provides clean water and the sewer side takes dirty water and cleans it so it can go back into the environment. Both of those elements cost money to treat each gallon. Uh, for homeowners, uh, if you are going to, and I'm going to let Dan, if he wants to kind of elaborate more, if a, a homeowner wants to use half their water, making sure that their lawn stays green and have a green lawn so it can be, you know, a prestige thing, whatever their individual desires are, uh, you know, there is a possibility that that water is being treated and provided and put on the lawn, but it's not being put into the sewer system. So what is the equitable way to, to kind of address where we treat the water, but we don't take the water back to be treated to put back into the environment? And I think that that's something that the Water Commission you know, really should uh, start to kind of weigh in on and, and get a sense for uh, giving people some advice in, in terms of what the approach is. Uh, we did have a little bit of a discussion the other day with Chatham. I'm trying to remember how Chatham did it. Uh, in 
terms of they don't do the second meters? Green service is not a second meter for the air gauge. Is that well, that's a perfect yeah. one. Fine. <laughs> Peter, free Partridge Lane, East Harwich. Uh, in Chatham, we are encouraging people to have a second meter for their irrigation. That way, the water consumption is is accounted for. And uh, quite frankly, they're, they're talking about uh, maybe even uh, putting a premium rate on that second meter. It's gonna, you want beautiful grass, you're going to pay for it. So that's kind of the way they're looking at things. Right. I'd just like to make like a, a comment in here. Um, you had mentioned about the questions both you and Dan and Megan have received. This is one of the, the issues that I see is that we're not getting that information back here. When we try to put together frequently asked questions and answers, we don't have the answers. We may look to you for the answers, but that's the stuff that's not coming back to us as a committee that we can address. We only hear this. Yeah, I'm kind of confused by that because I, I just said that Last week, last week, I had two inquiries. I've had three inquiries because I talked to somebody about the pump station, mm -hmm. and I'm reporting that now. So right, the information is being relayed in this format. I, does the committee want it in a, a different right, format? We only, we're only meeting one Tuesday a month and one Thursday evening. What I'm getting at is as you get the questions, if they're put into a an email or something and just shoot them to us um, okay. so that we know what the town is asking that we can you know maybe yeah. get these in our questions and answers we're going to need to look to you people for the answers but you're if, if one or two people are calling you chances are there's more people out there with those same questions mm -hmm. and you're only addressing that particular one where if we can get it in a question and answer format which we have already started uh, uh, a Q&A on the website, at, which is one that can be added mm -hmm. to, it makes it a lot easier maybe to address these people, even if you don't have all the answers right away to say, this is what we have, we're working on it. But at least they can go to that question and answer and look at it. But I, I guess that that's, you know. Because I, I do think, to your, to your point earlier, then, you know, I've been in government for a while and you try to find ways to be able to articulate things. And I think that you do have to have multimedia. Some people like to have the newspaper. Some people like right. to look at the website. Yeah. Some people do watch cable. Mm -hmm. So you know, having it just sent out in the form of an email, you know, uh, which I'm I'm content to and do. And I'm not saying that's the only way. I'm just but saying that this we helps. I think that. by doing these these opportunities, I've had a lot of people comment to me that I do that manager's corner once a month, and I try to take some of these issues and try to boil them out to to make kind of translate them into easier easier terms for folks and I know that in some cases I've, I've gotten good feedback that oh you've made a complicated issue fairly simple and you know we like that so I, I think that we do need to take an approach of multimedia to make Absolutely. sure we do address a, yes. a wide variety of people yeah. in the community. I, I think if I could just just say that um, you know we have we all have a list of frequently asked questions mm -hmm. and I think Chris what Sharon's getting at it is if someone asks a new question or ask the question in a different way we haven't seen before, mm -hmm. that you pass that along so we can sure. update our frequent list of questions. Or if you have a new answer, you know, if you have a different way of answering something that, you know, this, this came across really well, I tried answering it this way, we'd like to factor that in. I think that's, that's what exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not, not every, not a record of everybody who talks to you. Just, okay. you know, let's update the list as we can. I'd even benefit from new forms of confusion. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, um, you've had six questions on pumps. Well, did they know what they were talking about when you said pump? You know, a lot of people are still under the, you know, the, who've attended the meetings think I'm going to need a grinder pump when they don't. And so th when they hear pump, they, they think it applies to them. And so if we're trying to, to funnel people into, the, into answering pertinent questions, just not, not just questions. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think those are good comments. Yeah. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. All right, Noreen, go ahead. Well, I actually want to go back. Um, Chris, you covered, uh, you know, a lot of topics, so I couldn't get in there. A couple so, more, too. And that's <laughs> uh, you don't drop your voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, is it too early for us to ask the actual location of the pump stations? Would you rather continue working on that, which is fine? Yeah, I think as a courtesy to folks, uh, I always right. think it's better to kind of have an individual <clears throat> conversation first right. okay. and, and see. Uh, the, the engineers have right. given me um, alternatives. Right. So in some cases, I, I do have alternatives that I can utilize. Right. But I'd like to see. I, you know, I, I think, and I think I had mentioned this at one point. I, I've done this before. Yeah. It's been a little bit. But, uh, you know, at least the first inquiry, you know, they, the, the folks were very happy. They were very uh, amenable to working with the town. So, you know, I'm, I'm optimistically right. encouraged. That's why I phrased it that way. That, yep. That's right. Um, I want to go back to your statement about the money again, because everything is an educational opportunity. And it's been a while since I've even looked at those numbers. So you mentioned the $150 for, the, for everybody, for the tax For base. this initial phase two. Yeah. For this initial phase two. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, people hear the phases, there are so many. But um, isn't the estimate going to be that it will be, if all phases were in play, it would be approximately $400. That's it? correct. The average over the 70-year time horizon, right. the average, again, is $400. Right. And that's predicated on that, you know, everything in that assumption holds true. Right. And the biggest one of that that may not hold true, and hopefully it won't, is if we don't have to have a plant in Harwich and we can have a shared plant in right. Dennis, that could mean a, a 10 to $15 million worth of savings. Some of that, just with inflation over time, it still may end up at the two hundred and forty million level, but time will tell. Okay, I just want Sorry. to take this opportunity to be to be clear on the numbers. So, for the next approximately five years, while we're going through this phase, I mean this is really broad estimation, but I would estimate on a three hundred fifty thousand dollar home, the impact would be once we get going in a few months, um, about one hundred and fifty dollars a correct. year, and then. In the next phase, after five years, should the project continue as planned, then it will gradually morph up to a level of possibly three or four hundred dollars per year for a three hundred fifty thousand dollar home. Yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, I have to look at those numbers right. uh, just to see. No. Uh, there is a, a chance, and I just want to make sure that we, we kind of put this out there uh, as early as we can to some degree. Uh, right now, phase two is what we have. So phase two is in the books and we're moving. So I think it's important to make sure people understand that we are moving in those 650 uh, parcels. Phase three talks about doing the other part of the East Harwich or Pleasant Bay area. So capturing more uh, additional homes. As we progress in, in our discussions with uh, Dennis and with our discussions with Yarmouth, that you can see that we would approach and ask for an amendment to the plan because our plan calls for, I think it's in phase um, five or six, the construction of a treatment plant in Harwich. And if we don't construct it in Harwich and we have it in Dennis, then we would have to start doing West Harwich first and North Harwich would become the priority and then we head towards Harwich Center where right now the plan calls for uh, the treatment facility to be built in the center of Harwich, if you would, and then everything would migrate to the center. So there will be a little bit of a shift. Okay. And okay. in that shift, uh, we may have to pay some portion of that treatment plan. So you could see that our phase three would be to finish East Harwich, right. or not finish, but do the, the next phase in East Harwich, because technically phase eight also does uh, East Harwich. But you could see in that uh, five years from now request or within the next five year request that we would seek some money to cover some of the plant costs for you know, I, I have to say, I think you made the perfect, just made the perfect case for a communication coordinator because you are so into these numbers and this issue and have been for so many years that you just went into so much detail that I, God love you, I think you would have lost half the audience. You know what I mean? I mean, I was asking a question based on a, you know, 20,000 foot level to give people an idea of, you know, what they're gonna be spending out of their pocket over the next few years. But I, I say that, I hope you take it in the spirit that it said, you know. But, I, I hear you, it's yeah. definitely a complex uh, operation. And I do think, you know, one of the things I kind of catch myself is when you have people that come into your office and you have that interaction, you, right. you kind of get a sense. 
And quite honestly, no one wants to jump up and say, I don't really know something. Right. So when you, when you do these public forums, you know, it, it's a disincentive, I think, for some people. Whereas if you have the, the comfort of, you know, my office, if you would, where it's mm -hmm. just two people talking, I think you tend to get a little bit more uh, honest reaction. Okay, last point. So um, you went into the Q&A business before that you would receive two questions and that generated um, a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I think, in addition to what Peter was saying, it's not that we wanted to know you'd receive two questions, but what were the questions? You know, so, so not that we have to resolve that right now, but if you got two questions, Dan got six questions, Megan got six questions, you know, over time, um, you know, is there some way for us to find out what the questions were? Yeah, I think one of the things that we'll do is, uh, we do have meetings right now, I have meetings with Chatham, uh, we do have meetings, uh, I have meetings with the uh, CDM people on the construction side, and I think what we'll do is we'll have internal meetings so we can kind of all compare notes and then review those questions and see what are the questions being asked and are we making sure that we, we cover that. But so I didn't hear our, our name in there. We don't know what the questions yeah. are that you're getting. We, what I heard today is obviously you have the three of us here, so we're, we're here to kind of relay information verbally. And what I heard today is that you would like to have us when we do group and get a sense for what the questions are, if there are questions outside of what we're being asked or already being answered in the questions and answers, that you want to make sure we provide additional feedback to you. So we'll coordinate internally and then get back to you if the questions that are being asked are the same questions that are already on the Q&A or whether there's additional material. So one of, one of the three of us will follow up. I okay. think Megan's been most effective at doing the Q&A, so I may have her keep going with that. All right, and just to put this to sleep, Specifically, which Q&A are we referring to when we say I this? I think we have a Q&A or, or frequently asked questions on the website. All right, I'm gonna look that up and make sure we all know we're talking yeah. apples and apples. Thank you. Okay. All right, oh, Peter, go ahead. Uh, Chris, is, is there a non-resident taxpayer meeting this summer? Yes, there is. Has um, the date been set? Yeah, uh, I keep right. saying August 5th, but whatever the first Monday in August is, I think it's August be a wastewater August. segment. It, it will be on there. And if you want to have, I, I mean, I was, when in doubt, I usually just cover it myself. But if you guys want to have a, a representative, or Peter, if you yeah, want to. Yeah, we should think about that. Yeah. You know, we'll that would be that. great. Yeah. Uh, two other things I, I think I've mentioned this before, uh, Madam Chair, but at some point, uh, this, I think this committee would like to know what we're doing with Cold Brook. Not today, but, you know, and, and I'll go so far as to say, you know, we're talking about going and walking the, yeah. the site, if you will, just to find out maybe, you know, maybe, um, Mike comes in and talks about that where you are. I yeah, absolutely. That would be a good thing. And the other thing is that uh, water sampling, just, you know, Heinz's uh, work there, where we are, what we're learning. Yeah, I, I'm more nice familiar thing. with Cold Brook. I won't get into it today, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. on the water sampling, I need to find out. You know, the frustrating thing about water sampling is we do it and we send it to, and it takes six to nine months. It's phenomenal how long it takes to get yeah, results I, back. I think this so. committee, that's, I won't say a new topic for this committee, but we haven't even discussed that before. So mm -hmm. I think just where we are in the program, you know, how often we sample, what we're doing, when we're taking a sample. Yes, we can certainly have Heinz come in and, and have a conversation yeah. about yeah. that. Heinz yeah. used to come to the meetings. I'm gonna have to start sending him our uh, agendas and, and maybe ask if he can be on them okay. periodically. That's all I have. Oh, great question. Yeah. Okay. Dan, I think you're up. <laughs> All right, a couple, couple points I just want to touch on. Um, and just so the, the questions that I've received so far, um, I had three calls after the most recent letter went out. Um, and they've been more technical than general. And I think a lot of the Q&A stuff that we put out has been general education about phase two and, and things of that nature. Um, for specifics, um, one of the residents lived on a corner lot and they were trying to figure out which, they had two septic systems, one in the back, one on the side, and which one maybe, you know, which street they should hook up into, you know. So I was able to get the answer for him um, and I, to, to get that, I was ended up calling CDM and determined that, you know, he had spoke to them at one of the community meetings about his situation and they extended the pipe up the road a couple, you know, a couple more sticks to be able to catch him on the side street instead of the main street. Um, another one, um, 
had a resident called who had a rock wall and there was a, an electric box right in front of his house where he thought he'd want his sewer lateral to come in. Um, you know, so the, the answer I provided him, I pulled it up on Google Maps and did Street View and it looks like it's just a telephone box and I let him know that, you know, the sewer laterals are, you know, four or five feet deep and that, you know, going under a uh, buried cable line shouldn't be an issue um, and explain that, you know, through the engineering process that everyone's going to be required to go through for their individual sewer connection, you know, they'll be able to work those out with um, their engineer. Um, the last one I had was a guy at the, the bottom of a hill and the street had two hills and was wondering how the, the wastewater was going to flow down one hill and then up another and then down and I had explained to him that, you know, they'll do deep cuts through those, you know, peaks and it'll be shallower through the valleys and, you know, that sort of a, I guess, more general question. Um, for the irrigation stuff, um, last year the Water Department did do an irrigation survey. So we sent out postcards um, to everyone, I think in town, that was <coughs> above 70,000 gallons. Um, and we did get a decent response because what we're trying to do is twofold. One, get a good database of who has irrigation so we have a target group when it comes to sewering and how we're going to address irrigation in sewer deduct or sewer premium for, I mean, water premium for irrigation, um, things like that. So we did do that last year. Um, I brought it up again with the Water Commission at one of our recent meetings. Um, I'm going to be looking around to other communities to see what they're doing. Some people can, you know, don't have an irrigation meter, and if you have irrigation, they'll charge you 75 percent of your consumption or you know encouraging an irrigation meter or just using that meter for a sewer deduct as opposed to charging a premium so I'm kind of tasked myself with looking around and seeing what other communities are doing how it's working and then on the billing end you know internally having you know one account with multiple meters and meter reading and all that sort of stuff so it is on our radar as well um, so that's, I think, an update on kind of where we're at um, on the water end. Um, I know at the last meeting that I attended, um, we discussed that kind of master spreadsheet that had all the regulatory stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was able to be located. I sent it to you. Um, all right, I didn't see it. I'll check my email. Okay. Let me um, let me know if you didn't get it because I did send that to you because right. I found. I had a hard time getting electronically and I found that I had sent it to Larry and I used that and I think I actually, I may have actually forwarded okay. his email that contained that. Let me know if you didn't get all that. Right. Um, yeah, I just want to follow oh, up. Oh, all right. We had, we had discussed that, um, Chris and I as well, about you know starting to track that internally, so. All right, now, to that point, that is on our charge to monitor, so I was wondering Supposing this was going to be going on the on a website for the whole town to be able to see so that they know what was going on, what was being done, what has been done. Um, so um, I don't know when or who's going to see that that gets on That's the why I'm here asking yeah. for it. I didn't see it. So <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, all right. Because I, I wanted to ask you actually about that because I didn't hear anything back and I should have followed up sooner because I didn't hear anything back from you, but I did, I, I'm pretty sure I forwarded his email that it was in because I didn't have that specific one electronically. So I wanted to make sure we were all working off the same one. Right. So, um, all right. So Larry, are you going, you're going to... I'll, I'll report it then. All right. Thanks. All right. Okay, yes. Um, I wanted to thank Dan. I've been asking Larry and I have been inquiring into some uh, water usage specifically in the East Howitch area for um, a while now that we're getting into the nitty gritty and I had questioned with Chris that line on um, the cost of usage in the future and Dan sent some, you know, it's kind of a case of um, watch out what you wish for. Because yeah. <laughs> he sent pages and pages of data and it's excellent. I haven't had a chance to break out some of the higher tiers, as he said in his email to me. Um, I will say that the usage is higher than I would have thought. 
you know, looking from, you know, my own yeah. little bill and a few other people's little bills and everything. So um, now I've got to look at that in a different way. But I, as I say, I haven't made any conclusions from it, but I want to thank you for um, sending to that to us. On that note, as part of that line, uh, you know, it's, it's based on the 70,000 gallons, which, you know, that was part of what we were questioning. The other piece of that formula is the actual charge. So I guess I have to fall back to Chris to sometime in the future to say, is that rate equal to the current water rate or is it made up of, you know, what the quarterly Chatham bill would be divided by the number of years? Yeah, I don't know what the X, Y, and Z of that formula is yet. Now I know what the Y is, thanks to Dan. I'm not sure which, which of those numbers to use, but I have that. But but something to think about. It's, you know, a number we put down, Chris, many years ago, and it would be nice to know. I know it comes out to around seven cents, but I don't know if the seven cents signifies something equatable to something in Howitch, or was it something we got historically from Chatham? So just something to bang out as time goes on. Yeah. Thank you. We'll get together. Yep. Is it, is it still up to me to be establishing rates, or is that still TBD? Thanks. Uh, I don't have any correspondence or announcements. Does anybody? Yeah, well, you do. No. no, I just, oh. um, we have some new faces in the audience and I didn't know if I could ask what they were interested in or um, what maybe they got the letters in the mail and what might be bothering them or um, could I, I, I'm sorry you do. <laughs> it's because of the state open meeting law rules, so that's why you do have to go to the microphone. It's short. <laughs> okay. No, but we do love to get input, so. Oh, and if I you could introduce, if you could possibly introduce I yourself. think I'm Paula Grunberg. I live on Round Cove in East Harwich. Thank you. Um, I, I went online and pulled up a lot of information, but I guess what I'm looking for, and this may be covered by the manual, is I need step one, do this. Step two, do that. Step three, do something else. Yeah. <laughs> I really need it very clear in terms of how the homeowners need to yeah. proceed. Right. And I need to know it as soon as possible <laughs> so I can sleep nights. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what I would, what I would suggest today, yeah. July third, is that um, you know that guide is going to be good for a lot of people who come the fall, they're ready to move forward right. and talk to their neighbors. But if you're anxious right now, Paula, and yeah. you have concerns right now, then I would suggest that you contact Megan and Dan, um, and they've been wonderful working with people on an individual base. So Megan and Dan are on. Megan. And where do I get, they're on the town? Yeah. 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 Megan, Megan is the uh, health director. Yeah. Megan's the, the health. Water superintendent, so if you go to the water study. Yeah. Well, let's just give it to him. Yeah, just give him the. You can go right over there and get the business card at the desk over there, at the table. So. Okay, okay. But they've been working with, with many people as they yeah, come to them. Uh, even I, though I read through all this, it isn't right. It doesn't tell me what to do first, what to do second, what to do third, what to do. I mean, what we're trying to do as a whole group, not just as a committee, is you know, 650 people followed by 400 people. You're all going to have different ways you want to go about it. So we're trying to make a format. You know, maybe that guy will work for some people, for other people. They have different yeah, I know there are options the involved, but I right. just need to know. Exactly. It seems to me the first thing I've got to do is talk to the engineer, but I right. don't know. Right. I can't do much until I see him, right. but maybe there's mm -hmm. other stuff I need to pay And Megan and Dan for. have specific knowledge of your property and their records, too, so that's why they're very Okay, so I'm going to get cards from both of you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, someone mentioned. Uh, Just give us your name. Patches. Just give us your name first. Your name and your oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Norma Much, and I live on uh, Reliance Way, which is off of Round Cove, and it's a private way. I don't know what that's going to mean to me. 
Um, the other question, um, you mentioned taxes being increased about $150 per $350,000 home. Mm -hmm. How do you get an assessment that way when we're talking about water usage? Can I take it? Okay. So um, two different numbers going on in there. The $350,000 home, those numbers come from our assessing department. I mean, why are you using that as okay. an assessment? And not it, when we're talking about water usage, I think. Right. Okay, because it starts, well, water usage is one component. Um, the other component, the biggest component, is the cost of actually building the system, the system itself going down the roads. So that really is not specifically tied to your water usage. That will be the $25 million that was just voted. So that is based on your tax rate. The same as when you pay for police, fire, library, that's based on your tax rate. And so that's where the $150 kicks in. And the only reason we use the $350,000 is that's the average cost of a home, or was, in Harwich. And so if my home's a little less than that, it's assessed a little less than that, so I know I probably won't be paying $150, I'll probably be paying $120. Somebody might have a home that's assessed at $500,000, which it will say on your assessor's card. So you wouldn't be paying $150, you'd be paying more like $220 on that. But that piece of the cost is not related to your water usage. That's related to the cost of the construction of the um, sewer system. And if I, am I correct that everybody's going to be? Why wouldn't it be equal for everyone? That particular component is equal for everyone, but it's based on the tax rate. I know, so it's not equal for everyone. Right. Um, I mean, what am I trying to say? Streets are a certain length, let's say, um, uh, and the houses on that street may be varied in right. their value. Right. So, okay. you see what I'm trying to okay. say? So, for in, okay, let me be clearer. So that $150 is being paid by everybody in the town. I'm in an area that will never be sewered. I will also be paying that rate. I'd like rate. to move there. <laughs> <laughs> but just, yeah. just to, be, to be clear, in five years, I'm going to have to replace my septic tank. That's something that once you uh, complete this process, you will never have to do again. You know, about every 20 years, you have to replace your septic system. So that's how it kind of equalizes from one side to the other. But the actual, that, that's the individual cost we bear. You're going to bear the cost of hooking up to a sewer system. I'm going to bear the cost of replacing my septic system every 25 years for as, well, as long as, as well I as, live. As well as having it um, right. pumped. Um, I thought everyone had to be on the sewer. No, no. We're Why doing is that? Fifty. Okay. I, I, I have. Yeah, that's fine. I have no. That's fine. No knowledge of, of okay. a lot because right. we yeah. were in an area, initially, that wasn't phase okay. two. Yeah. And so everybody's saying, "Oh, you've got forty years." So mm -hmm. I didn't pay attention to very right. much at that point. Then all of a sudden, we're the first ones to be sewered, and I don't know what's going on. Honestly. Okay. <laughs> so, so I have reason, a lot of questions. The reason is that um, when this project was first being studied in this town about 15 plus years ago, um, they looked at, first of all, the amount of nitrogen we had to reduce as a town to satisfy the state and to help the environment. Um, and if we were to sewer 100% of the town, we would exceed the amount required. We, we don't have we don't to, do that. to do that. It would be wonderful, you know, for the environment and for everything else, and maybe everybody would like sewers, but we don't have to do that. So it was determined that by picking certain areas, depending on where the uh, groundwater flows, um, that we would could accomplish the goals that the state has set and the environment has currently set by sewering 50% of the homes. 
So that's why we we're only suing 50% of the homes because we, all of us, are dividing up the cost of 220 million as opposed to 400 million if we sued the entire town. So that's why. But then it was further determined by both at town meeting and by ballot that even though we're only sewering 50% of the homes, we all cause the problem and we all bear the cost. So even though I am in that area that you aspire to be that will never be sewered, I'm part of the Sorry. cause of the problem and I have to be a part of the cost. So, so you will be? Not. I'll be paying. I will not be sewered. You know, but you have to hook up, I don't. I have to replace my septic system, your septic system will be gone. So all this was done. I mean, it's never going to be equal every spot to every spot. Yeah. But I mean, it was done with an effort to a look at fairness. You know, it's never with a thing this big going to be exactly. Okay, okay. No, wait. that's the general. Wait, Peter wanted to say something. Thank you. Wait, can I just point out one other, to one other topic for you? Uh, because you started talking about water usage and water flow. And so, no, this relates to you. This relates to you. So once, you want me to go back? yeah, I do. Please, please. You're on the hot seat. So once, so once the taxpayers in town put that pipe, the sewer pipe, in the street, and then you have to connect. The reason we talk about usage rates, you're going to end up paying what I would call an operation and maintenance cost based on that usage, how much water you use, basically, because what comes in goes out, and to operate the plant, whether in your case it's a Chatham plant. Um, there, there are costs associated with operating that plant. You know, there are labor costs and chemical costs and repair costs and those kinds of things. So you will be, um, just like you get a water bill now, you'll be getting a uh, portion of a bill that's a sewer. Another bill? Sewer okay. Well, it might be combined, but <laughs> you will be seeing that. And I will point out that initially in the town of Harwich, we were going to build, and one of them was going to be in East Harwich, its own treatment facility and another one uh, by the landfill. We've been successful primarily because Chatham got ahead of everybody in this area as far as building a, you know, and, and operating a sewer plant, treatment plant. And over time they learned that they had basically some, some excess capacity that they were willing to sell us. So we were able to negotiate, um, we think a reasonable agreement called an intermunicipal agreement to use a portion of their facility and that's where your sewage from East Harwich will be flowing. Um, that's why East Harwich ended up being the leader, if you will, or lead dog in the, the equation. <laughs> well, because because that facility is up and running, and yeah. it's it's straightforward for us to tap into it. The other thing you should know is that Chatham, Harwich, Orleans, and Brewster surround Pleasant Bay, and that's been an area of great concern as far as the water quality goes. And Chatham addresses that directly. They decide to sue their entire town. We decided only to do what's necessary. But the focus has been on cleaning up um, or helping Pleasant Bay. And part of that is, if you're familiar with the Route 28 bridge, Muddy Creek Bridge, uh, that goes from Chatham, Harwich, and then into Orleans, Brewston, Orleans, um, widening that, replacing that bridge, widening it, getting more flow in there, was all part of uh, a joint effort between Chatham and Harwich and the state um, to, to uh, lessen the need for how many homes we had to sewer in East Harwich. So it's a very, it's a complicated thing, but there are many moving parts and many, many uh, different things that are solving, helping to solve the problem. So that bridge, that's why the bridge is done. It wasn't done just because, oh, we wanted to replace a bridge. We actually opened up. Well, I know. We opened that up so the water flows in and out. It gets better flushing is the way to describe it. I thought um, it was for the herring. What's that? <laughs> it's thought it's, it's, for, it's, it's for everybody. It's for everybody. But I, I thank you for bringing up your questions. <laughs> and, and you. Any way we can help you, let us know. Did you have a question? Well, I think you, and my name is Jane Dion. I live in, um, on Fredericksburg Avenue in East Harwich. And this has been an education for me. I've gotten your literature. I found it helpful. Um, but there is a lot of angst out there. And it would be good to have community outreach I've talked to um, one engineer, coastal engineering, I think that's okay. right, about, about some of this. And I have some concerns because our bathroom is on the back of the house. And right. I've got to go all the way around, down the trees, and around to the front. So I do have concerns, so I would meet with them or, or make it about that. 
and some of the discussion here was helpful too about why are sexual encounters chosen. And I think a lot of people feel that way. Why did you choose us? Gee, I wouldn't live long enough right. <laughs> for that to happen. Anyway, but thank you. And um, I, I, I'll go back and tell the others about it and see if I can get some neighbors. Thank to you. that point, to that point, there have been some areas um, that are being sewered that have developed neighborhood um, groups. groups. I don't yes. know what else to Associations. call them. Um, and they get together and they talk about things. They get questions answered. They're looking at getting group rates with engineering or possibly um, the construction end of it. So pulling, pulling a little group together can be extremely helpful in relaying information. And something that we would like to do going forward, let's say September, October, um, we have at least one that I know of, maybe two, where the, we, we're going to call them uh, neighborhood liaisons. Right. All right. That would be great in our neighborhood, and I'm sure others um, too. So anybody out there that does listen to this, or you can go back with that idea, if you guys would like to, you know, pull a group together and pick a neighborhood liaison that could come to the meetings, or you know. Um, contact point. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it's beneficial to, to the neighborhood um, as well as to us because then we do hear what some of the concerns are and get them explained. You can go back and explain okay, yes. why it was your group to go first. <laughs> My thought too, going through the intersection of 39 and 137, that's already a bottleneck, but I heard you say you're planning to go around that. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Yes. All right. Well, mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Thank you, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Chairman. I'll oh. just add too for the public that um, um, these meetings are televised, and Channel 18 puts them on very fast. So as a source of information, that's once a month that you can hear what's going on without having to, you know, follow Board of Selectmen's meetings. And um, we also have meetings on the fourth Thursday night. They're not long. They're about six to seven o'clock. But you can either watch those on TV or you can come, and we will do our best to answer or get the answer to any, to, to any question presented. So. All right. Uh, uh, let me see where we are. I think we're. All right. The next meeting is going to be July 26th at 6 p.m. here in the Griffin Room. Who's available? I guess. Uh, is everybody on? Free. You're free. Well, you're year, but you're could free, be, so. and and our our <laughs> none named other person on the committee. <laughs> we'll check with that person. Um, person X. That person X. Okay. Question. Yes. Um, I was wondering. That's an evening meeting. I didn't know if anybody, you know, that July's going to fly has any topics that we might think about being on that agenda, or maybe mm, not. Not yet. I haven't thought about that agenda that far. Okay, that's <laughs> perfectly fine. <laughs> I will do that. Yeah. I haven't thought of any myself <laughs> either. <No. laughs> so, uh, all right. If anything, if, if we're all finished. We're good. Motion to adjourn. Second. Done. 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 All right.